All right, welcome back. Troy Landry, our guest tonight from Swamp People. And uh, Troy, family-wise, a little bit about your family. Tell us a little bit. Married for how long now? Well, it's going to be, uh, God, I better get this right because the wife <laughs> might be watching. Uh, it's going to be 30 years in September I've been married. Good deal. And three, three kids, right? Three boys, uh, two little granddaughters, and I just got my first grandson uh, a week ago Sunday. Congratulations. That's Thank a great you, deal. Beautiful little baby boy. And, and Look one just of them, like his and, grandpa. There you go. Hey, one of them's on the show with you. One of your sons is on the show. And uh, how does he like being on the show? Oh, he likes it. He likes, he loves it. And uh, mm -hmm. he can't wait for his little boy to grow up and be on it now. <laughs> <laughs> Hope it goes that long. Huh? That would be a great thing. <laughs> now, have you met all the characters, the guys, brothers, the uh, Joe? Tommy, have you met them all? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I met Trapper Joe and Tommy, I met them all. Uh, okay. Real nice crew, uh, uh, the guy's brother, they're real funny. That's some characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, uh, you know, and, and at first I wondered why they put the guy's brothers on the show because they don't even catch alligators. But I think it's just to show what they do, a little something different and, uh, yeah. you know, some people love them, uh, they want more of them on the show. They love catfish. Some and, people, uh, and they you know, boiled their garfish, right? Which you normally fry, but they boiled it, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I ate uh, garfish boiled about 10,000 times, and I never fixed them the way they fixed them. <laughs> but maybe they might be good. I don't know. <laughs> who, who knows, right? Let's take a few phone calls, and uh, there you see some of the show. Jason was rolling it in. and Ask a question to Troy. Here we go. You, you got 30 seconds because we're going to have a full lineup tonight. HTV, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. What's happening, man? What's happening, Ricky? How you doing there, Mr. Landry? I'm doing good, sir. Well, that's a good thing, boo-boo, because -boo, uh, guarantee what you do is very dangerous. You not only got to look out for Al E. Gator, you got to watch out for freaking copperheads and everything else that goes along with that body. Logs in the freaking body and everything else. And if something goes wrong, and you freaking shoot one of them gators, they're going to fucking turn on you if you don't kill them. All right, so let me ask you while Ricky's making his point. What's the the biggest thing that's ever happened to you as far as grabbing something, maybe have a copperhead or a snake around? Yeah, What's the biggest thing? You know, sometimes when you're fishing in the, the marsh, I mean in the swamps, more than in the marsh, you're under trees and all of that. and. Sometimes the snake will fall off of a branch in the boat, or you got to be careful. You're ripping and running. You're always in a hurry. Alligator's always trying to bite you. It's dangerous. You got to be careful. You know, Kyle, who drove you over here, he's scared to death of snakes. You know that, huh? Yeah, I'm not scared of snakes. They don't bother me at all, but uh, you got to be careful. You can't let them bite you. You know what I'm saying? Well, you better and, not be scared. You're all around them. And like the, the caller just said about logs, you can't see what's under the water. I got a real good friend of mine, the same age as me, a commercial fisherman from Pi Park that uh, drowned two years ago. Him and his brother were fishing hoop nets, and uh, they hit a stump uh, behind Lake Pelourde and uh, flipped the boat over, and he drowned and uh, made his whole living, all his life, uh, in the bias. Yeah. So there's a lot of danger out there, and uh, you just keep your fingers crossed and pray to good Lord that things go well. What's the biggest gator you've ever caught? Martin, the biggest gator I ever caught was about two or three episodes back. It wasn't the longest, but it was by far the biggest. Uh, if the people out there remember the episode when it was real bad weather, we were fishing in bad weather, and it was raining, and the water was coming over the side of the boat. Jacob and I loaded a big alligator over the side of my boat. It took us about an hour to get him in the boat. That alligator was 12 and a half foot long, but he was as big around as a 55-gallon drum. Wow. I know that alligator weighed in the upper 900 pounds. He was by far the biggest alligator I ever caught in my life. Not the longest, yeah. but by far the biggest. That could weigh you out trying to get that thing. Oh, above, it took huh? us an hour to get him in the boat. That's incredible. It was a monster. Let's take another phone call, Troy. HTV, welcome to the program. Your question for Troy, please. Yeah, good evening, Martin. How you so, doing? Off Ashley here. Hey, Mr. Arthur, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Troy don't uh, know me. I've heard of him. Uh, you got to realize I've been running up there to Ricky Phillips for about 30 years, get, by, getting crawfish every day. And uh, I've heard of Troy. Uh, I've heard about pretty much about everybody up there. Uh, I've been up there. Uh, I used to run up there on the old four-wheel drive because they didn't have a blacktop road going from Gap Park to Pigeon. Yeah. And uh, that was back in the day. 
and uh, I've heard of Troy and all, all the people in, you know, all in that area. And I want to tell them that I really appreciate what him and Ricky is doing to bring the basin, the beauty of the basin, and what, what you know, uh, I call it God's country over there, you know, right. and bringing it to the, to the whole country uh, to see what we have down here. We've got a treasure that uh, nobody realizes how, how, how nice it is. That's got to make you feel good, yeah. Paul, when you hear that and, and that. <clears throat> it's not all about the alligators all the time. Yeah, that's right. the beauty right. of it. What right. do you think about all yeah. that? Yeah. Well, let me tell uh, this gentleman, uh, if you got Ricky Phillip in your back pocket as a friend, you got one of the best they got out there. Uh, I've been knowing Ricky for years and years. We used to fish together, him and I, long before we was he was a crawfish boy, and you can't find a nicer fellow on this earth. And, uh, you know, getting back to the beauty of the bayous in the swamps, when we were filming the first year, I, I thought to myself, in my heart, I knew, I said, you know, I know people, some people's gonna like this show, Hunters and all that, but everybody gotta like the beauty. You know, the swamp, the bayous and all. Mm -hmm. you, gotta, you gotta be crazy if you don't find that beautiful. You know, the big cypress trees with the moss hanging over the bayous mm -hmm. and the big oak trees and uh, it's something unique to this area and it's beautiful. And like you said, it's, it's God's country. It look like, I feel when I'm in the bayous in the swamp, it's, like the time, the, the land that time forgot, you know, the, uh, and it's, to me, there's no other place that's near as pretty as the swamp. And you're getting paid to do it. How about that? And I'm getting paid. To, that's pretty I'm good. getting paid to do it. Imagine that. But you've earned your way. I mean, you know, they went for the person that they thought would be good. You got this deep, bellowing voice. You got a great accent, hard worker. So... You paid your dues, you know, didn't you, to get that? You know, Martin, a lot of people might not know this, but when they first contacted me to, to do this uh, show, I turned them down at first. Did you? Yeah, they, you know, this show got all twisted around. It was supposed to be a three-hour documentary, mm -hmm. a one three-hour movie about alligators and the people that catch alligators. Right. They came here, they filmed us. Well, uh, they came down, they spent a week at Wildlife and Fishery looking up information on alligators and all. And uh, they asked if they knew people that had a lot of tag that would be maybe willing to uh, let them uh, film them. And that's how I got involved. One of my buddies at Wildlife and Fisheries gave him my name because I got a lot of tags. I got about 300 some tags. Mm -hmm. And uh, my buddy called me, he said, look, he said, uh, from Wildlife and Fisheries, he called me, he said, look, he said, I gave some people from New York your name and number. He said, I hope you don't get mad at me. They want to uh, go out with you on the board and film you, take pictures of catching alligators. So I said, yeah, I'll bring them for you. That ain't no big deal. I was going to do it for nothing. Right. So when they contacted me and I started talking to them, I realized they wanted to film us the whole season. <laughs> and I told them, oh, no. I said, my board is a work board. I said, I don't have time to uh, be playing with a bunch of camera people. You know, I, <laughs> I got to catch over 300 alligators. I said, I'm going to keep my word. I said, I'd bring you all for two or three afternoons, and I will, but I can't bring you all every day. And boy, they started crying like little babies. Oh, man, we want to, we was told we got to go with you and this and that. So they started telling me, they said, we're going to pay you. We're going to pay all your helpers. We're going to pay your expense. And you don't have to do nothing extra for us. Just do what you normally do. Go catch your alligator. So, man, I started thinking about it. <laughs> it sounded pretty good, you know. So, so I, I, I agreed. I said, well, let's try it for one year. And then when they filmed us that one season and then they went back to New York with the footage, History Channel started looking at the footage and they said, oh, no, we ain't going to, this ain't going to be no documentary. We're going to make a, whatever, a mini series or reality show or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So the show got all twisted around. It was supposed to be a one, three hour show. And it all got all twisted around. We done film season one and two. And now they're coming back this wild season in September for season three. And spinoffs all over the place. Yeah. So yeah. That, that, and now I'm even on the TV and, uh, Channel 10 and home over here. <laughs> and we appreciate that, too. <laughs> and always remember your roots. That's a good thing. That's it, boy. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. When we come back, back to the phone lines with Troy Landry. Don't go away.